Amen. Galatians chapter 1. Good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We've been talking a little bit on Wednesdays about the fivefold ministry, the need for the fivefold ministry, and the, the work that that fivefold ministry do. And of course, that fivefold ministry is that He, Jesus, gave first some apostles, He gave some prophets, He gave some evangelists, He gave some pastors, and He gave some teachers. Those five workings within the body of Christ. God has ordained and God has called. And we've been looking at those for the past several weeks now. We were discussing how a preacher who preaches the true word of God, who gives of a warning and a, the, the role of a prophet in the New Testament is really foretelling and forthtelling. God, through the Holy Ghost, can move upon a prophet to foretell of an event or of a, of a thing to give warning. But the role of a prophet is also forthtelling, warning, giving the church and the world a reminder of the soon coming judgment of the Lord. If the church does not have the role of a prophet, it will soon become a dead church. Because a church must be reminded of the future, of what is to await us. What I'm talking about this morning is not what awaits us in the future of our economy, what awaits us in the future of elections, of world governments. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the return of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about if the church today does not preach the rapture of the church, if it does not remind the body that the, Jesus is soon coming and his return is imminent, yes. which means he could come today or tomorrow, we do not know. We must live and walk in, in, the, in the presence and in the spirit of God by faith every day because Jesus could come today. Amen. Will he find us wanting? Oh, will he find us waiting and watching? As a boy, I remember being taught Jesus could come back at any time. The rapture of the church is imminent. And there are many false teachings today that say that that is not so. And they can join, and join the, the, the entire multitudes of people who have gone and, and left and departed from the faith. Because these things that we're talking about are scriptural, and if we neglect them, we will find it in our spirit we are missing something. Something is not awakened within us. And I remember as a boy, I would wake up, and I would go through the house, and perhaps nobody was in the house, and I would begin to get fearful and think, perhaps I missed the rapture. And I would look for mom, and I would look for dad, and I'd run through the house and look for my sister, and I'd run outside and, and nobody was there. And, and I would think, because my, my grandparents lived literally a field away from us. And I would think, surely, if, 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 if grandma and grandpa are also gone, then I've missed it. My eyes and my faith wasn't on Jesus, and I missed the rapture. And I'd run down with fear stricken in my heart, and I'd open up the door, and I would see that my mom and dad, Kathy, had gone down to grandma and grandpa's house, and I knew I had another chance. He hadn't come yet. But see, the fact that Jesus' return was imminent kept my heart walking in the fear of God. Yes. Kept me thinking to myself, could this be the day? And in times in my life when I was not walking right with Jesus, I would fear in time scriptures. I would fear revelation. I didn't want to read it. 
But when I got right with God, and when I come by faith, and I was truly set apart, born again, crucified with Christ, Jesus came into my life and circumcised my heart, cut away the old foreskin of the flesh, which is what the Word of God says has to happen to you, or else we're not born again. When that happened, everything changed in terms of my thought process on Jesus' return. And today I'll ask the Lord, today, Lord, are you coming? Lord, is this the day that you're going to split that sky? Is today the day the trump will sound? Is today the day you're going to come get your bride? Is this the last day I have here on earth? Is this the day? Because my faith is in Jesus and he is who I'm watching for. I'm not watching for an event. event. I'm not waiting for the Antichrist. I'm not watching for... For, for these things, there are signs of the times that tell us, get ready. But I'm watching for Jesus. He is the one I'm waiting for. Amen? Amen. Galatians chapter 1. I wrote an article on this Friday. I posted it on our Facebook We were in Fort Wayne and I seen a sign that said, I believe in the separation of church and hate. I believe in the separation of church and hate. This morning I have a message on my heart that I know the Holy Spirit has given me. It is a message of forth telling. It is not just intended for you that are sitting here this morning, but it is intended for those who might, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, watch this at a later time on the YouTube channel. Because Jesus is coming. Amen? Amen. He's coming. Amen. And this sign, it said, I believe in the, in the separation of church and hate. Of course, they are playing off of the words of the separation of church and state. But the twistedness that has become what the modern church today is is a reminder of us that Jesus is coming soon. Because the church has left its first love. If we will read the word of God and we understand the events that are around us, don't be naive. Don't be undiscerned. If we do not see the falling away that has happened, then we're already falling away with it. If we clap our hands today and say the modern church today has it all together, we have fallen into the cult of the modern church. Because the modern church today who stands up and says that the church and hate must be separated, what does that mean? And perhaps some of us are thinking, what does that mean? It is all referencing today where what is right is now labeled as wrong, and what is evil is now labeled as good. Today, if you stand up and you preach against the sin of homosexuality, you are considered a hater. It is called hate speech today. And I don't hate homosexuals. you got to bear with me here. I love them. I love them as much as I love you. I love people because I know where their soul is going to go. I said the other day, it doesn't matter if it is a, a, is a hard, hateful, hard-hearted, hard in the appearance of a, of a person. And you look at that man or that woman in the flesh who might look hard and, uh, I'm saying this poorly, they might be in a gang and they have their, their gang tattoos on their face and on their body that identify them as their as a gang member and they might be hard like that and if you look at that you'll likely walk away from them and say they're unreachable but that is a body that will burn that is a body that will rot as much as mine but that's not what God's looking at he's looking at the soul the spirit within that carcass within that body who cares about what you see on this it's what's in here. All this is only an evidence of what that inside is, is doing. And that is a soul that needs touched by Jesus Christ. 
Homosexuality is not, you're not born that way. It is a sin, the Bible says. The Bible teaches that man, as they continue to give over to a corruption and give it over into lawlessness and turning away from God, these are the evidences that we're living in the end times. Jesus said, as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, as in the days of Noah, so will it be in the end time at the coming of the Son of Man. And ladies and gentlemen, we are there. Yes. You can go and you can watch a pride par parade. And you can see it being led by banners of a Methodist church who are putting that denomination's name upon this. And there are other denominations, and I'm calling them out, but there are others also that are, have, 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 have put their name of acceptance upon this. This is the church today that God is not coming back for. That has already been given away to sin. Paul says in, in, in Galatians 1 verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. What is he saying? He's saying that Satan does not need to deny Jesus. Satan does not need to cause you to become an atheist in order to get you to hell. He does not need to lead the church away from Jesus in order to accomplish that. All he has to do is pervert a little bit. Pervert the gospel of Jesus. And he has done so. To the point today that if the church speaks out against sin the way Jesus did, and they've labeled Jesus as a, as a man, a sandal-wearing, long-haired hippie that loves everybody. Peace. But let me tell you today, that is not who Jesus Christ is. He came as a lamb to be slain. But he's coming back as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Fire in his eyes and a sword proceeding out of his mouth. And he's coming to make war. He's not coming back as a lowly lamb to lay down his life again. He's coming back to say, those of you who did not keep my word, those of you that turned your back upon the gospel that is not to be perverted, those of you that compromised it, those of you that said what is sin is now accepted, I'm coming back to make war against you. Praise God, church. I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm going to tell you this. Praise God that you've got a preacher right here right now that will tell you this. Because there's preachers that will be too scared to say the words that I'm saying right now. They're going to be too scared of what might come back upon them. But the Apostle Paul said, Woe well, unto me if I preach not the gospel. God did not call me to pat people on the back. He didn't call me to give you a, a lullaby sermon that will sleep you to, and, and to put you to spiritual sleep. That's right. He called me to wake you up. Yes. John the Baptist said the axe is already at the root of the tree. Whatever that does not bear fruit will be hewn down and cast into the fire. This is the day we're living in. He says, I marvel that you've departed so much from the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. His grace has been shown to set homosexual, uh, homosexuals free. Yes, grace is not so that you can continue in homosexuality and make yes. it to heaven. Yes. Grace is so that you can forsake sin and be set free from those devilish ways. And I'm, I'm calling out homosexuality, but I'll go on. And I'll say the transgender group. It's sin. I'll go on to say the adultery that is going on in the, in the church today. The fornication in the church today, sex outside of marriage, it is sin and God's coming to make judgment upon those that are not holding people accountable and saying the grace of God according to Titus has come and been revealed to all men that you might forsake sin. Amen? I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a perfect person, but I've experienced the grace of God and the sins that I were once in, God has set me free from. And I can look back and say he did not save me so I can remain in it. 
He set me free so I can walk away from it. And so I can say that's what I used to be. But I ain't that way no more. Jesus has saved my soul. He set me free. I marvel that you're so soon departed from the faith. I want to read some scripture here. I'm going to read quite a little bit. Bear with me. The word of God is more powerful than any words that I can try to summon up. So I'm just going to read it. 2 Peter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Many shall follow their per pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Meaning it's soon. The judgment of God is soon. As we're reading this, think about some of the things that the modern church today puts out. The word of faith movement. The, the prosperity movement. You can live your best life here on this earth movement. That is all false. That's right. The best life that you're ever going to have is if you give your life to That's Jesus right. and it is, it is yet to come. Right. You right now receive the earnest, the down payment of what is to come. Right. But if we live our best life now, if we think that, that I'm going to live the way I want to live down here, it won't happen. Right. This will be the best life we'll ever get. The Bible says anyone who will live godly will suffer persecution. And he... For if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved in the judgment, and spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. If you think numbers matter, let me tell you today, only eight souls were saved from the flood. Yeah. Out of the entire planet of the world, only eight people were righteous. And God says that it will be the same way when Jesus returns as in the days of Noah. I don't care if you've got 5,000 people under one roof. It don't impress me not if they're not born again walking in the Spirit of God. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overflow, uh, overthrow. Making an example unto those that afterwards should live ungodly. What was Sodom and Gomorrah all about? It was an example. So that we would not turn back into those same lifestyles. But yet what is it today? They throw the six colored rainbow flag at the face of God. And they walk half naked down the streets publicly parading themselves with churches in the front leading the way. Talking about pride in their sin. Sodom and Gomorrah was a reminder to, you, to us that this is what God thinks. God's not a pushover. God's not some, some hippie that's standing around going peace and smoking a joint of weed. Jesus is the soon coming king that gave his precious blood, his life blood to save the lost. If his blood was so precious, why do we trample upon it? Glory to God, listen to me. If his blood is so precious, why do we think it's so worthless? If we think it can't save a lost soul from sin. If we say that it only God's grace covers it. God's grace reveals it. God's grace will deliver you from it. Amen. Verse 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lusts of uncleanliness. Despise governments. They're presumptuous. They're self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels which are greater in power might bring not railing accusation against them before.